Hey guys, Phil from Trail Talk here and welcome to part two of my best value bike brands tier list. So if you haven't already, definitely check out part one first. I'll put the link in the description, but I go over the more popular bike brands and I also go over my criteria when I'm kind of talking about what I consider good value. So definitely check that one out first. But for a quick refresher, we've got S at the top. So that's gonna be a best value brand. Super value, I don't know what the S stands for, it's the best one. Then you've got A, B, C, and then down the bottom you've got dentist. So only really dentists can afford those bikes, they aren't necessarily the best value. So today we're gonna to be covering 15 different brands and then a video in the future, I've got another 15 lined up as well. So we'll cover that in the near future. So definitely subscribe for that one. So enough talking, let's get into the first brand. Okay, so let's start off with Boardman who are sold through Halfords in the UK. A lot of their mountain bike range has been freshly updated for 2021 and it looks like they're onto some winners here. Starting off with the MTR full suspension kind of all mountain bike which has been updated to better suit the demands of modern trail riding. It has a 66 head angle, 75.5 degree seat angle and 475 millimeter reach on the size large and that has 145 millimeters of rear travel and 150 up front. The spec on the top of the line 9.0 model is really good for the money. You get a Pike Select, Deluxe Select Plus Rear Shock, SLX 12 speed drivetrain, as well as SLX 4 pot brakes as well. So that's looking really good. And the frame looks really sleek too. You've got some nice smooth welds and it's good to see a horse link at this price point as well. And you get all this for 2000 pounds. So that's pretty damn good. There's also more affordable models at 1600, 1300 and 1000 pounds. And with their two lower end models, you get QR releases in the rear. And then on the top two models, you get a through axle in the rear. So that's a little bit of a cost saving that they've made there. The hardtails also feature trail ready spec with their entry level MT6 coming with an air fork, 1x10 drivetrain, and that's the new Shimano M4100 drivetrain. You've got hydraulic brakes as well as tubeless ready rims. And that comes in at 650 pounds. So that's a really great value package there. So with all things considered, we're gonna start off strong and we're gonna have to give Boardman an S, so top ranking there. Next up, we have Co-op, who like Boardman, is an in-house brand, but this time for REI in the US. Their flagship dual suspension bike, the DRT 3.2, comes in at 2,799 US dollars, that's recommended retail price. The Geo is pretty good for a trail bike with a 75 degree seat angle, 67 degree head angle, and 475 millimeter reach on the size large. The spec is definitely good, but not great. You've got NX Eagle, Revelation RC Fork, Shimano MT500 brakes, but this is where the bike gets a little bit funky. The small and medium bikes come with 26 inch, 2.8 inch tires, so a bit weird. And the large comes with 27.5, 2.8 inch tires. So yeah, definitely a bit weird. Uh, I think plus size are definitely on trail bikes gonna be a bit more of a thing in the past. The hardtail's are okay too, the GA looks nice, but there's definitely some quirks again with the spec, which makes me feel like the company is a bit behind the eight ball as to what the market really wants these days. So I'm going to have to give them a B. So now we're gonna take a quick look at Evil. Evil have had some really nice bikes and they absolutely shred. And the updates they've made to the Reckoning this year for 2021 and then the following last year, they look great. But with the entry level builds coming in at around 5,799 US dollars, we're gonna to have to give them a dentist, unfortunately. On to Fuji now, and I feel like everyone has mixed opinions about Fuji. Their trail bike, the Rakan, is pretty good for the money. Looking at the mid-level 1.3, you get 120 millimeters of rear travel controlled by a Fox DPS shock, and then 130 up front taken care of with a Fox rhythm. You get a 1x11 Shimano drivetrain, TRP G-Spec trail 4-pot brakes, and all this for 2,999 US dollars. So okay, but not groundbreaking. The Geo is pretty good too, with a seat angle of 75 degrees and 66 degree head angle, and the reach on the size large is 490, so pretty long. But combining that 75 degree seat angle with that 490 reach, that gives you a 654 effective top tube, so you're going to feel very stretched out while you're in the saddle, and this is a bit of a trend on their dual suspension bikes. However, you can size down to the medium, and that gives you a 470 millimeter reach and an effective top tube of 626 millimeters, which is very similar to, say, a Trance 29 in a size large. They also have their Auric LT, which is a 27.5 inch enduro bike, so definitely worth checking that one out. But overall, considering the value and all that kind of stuff, I'm going to have to give Fuji a B. Next up we have Intense, which is a brand that's not usually associated with value. However, they did shift to some direct sales, so let's see if that helped a little bit for this year. 
So looking at the Prime, which was new for 2020, the entry level model comes in at 6,499 Australian dollars and 3,799 US dollars. And for that, you get a carbon frame, Fox 34, DPX2, my favorite Shimano MT520 brakes, as well as an NX Eagle drivetrain. The geometry is a little bit better than what it used to be for Intense, but it still is a little bit behind the eight ball in terms of seat angle. So you get a 74.4 degree seat angle in the low setting, which as I said, it's not ideal, but the reach isn't too bad at 469 millimeters and a 65.3 degree head angle is pretty good. Overall, they still definitely aren't the best value. So I'm gonna have to give them a C. So let's check out Nolly now. And I'm not gonna lie, I'm a pretty big fan of their bikes. My personal favorite is the Fugitive. So let's take a look into that for a price guide. The suspension's pretty dialed thanks to the 4x4 suspension linkage, and so is the geometry with a 75.75 degree head angle in the slack setting, a 76 degree seat angle, and 477 millimeter reach on the size large, and that's running a 140 millimeter fork paired with 120 millimeters of rear suspension. So Nolly's definitely a bit more of a boutique kind of brand, but they know how to spec their bikes very smartly. So for $4,580, you get a Pike Ultimate, G2 Ultimate Brakes, GX Eagle, and Chromag Finishing Kit. So that's pretty smart spec for the money. It's about four to $500 behind, say, a Meta TR with equivalent spec or a Ritmo AF, but it's still pretty damn good, so I'm gonna have to give them a B. On to Propane now, and they've definitely been making some moves in the direct sales market in Europe, and then they're also shipping to the US too. The Ecano is actually considered to be one of the best value e-bikes on the market, so that's good to see as well. Looking at their new Enduro bike, the Tai. I don't know if I pronounced that right, but it comes in both aluminium and carbon models. The entry level Tai AL comes in at 3,499 US dollars. And for that, you get a Yari RC, Deluxe Select R Shock, so no lockout there, GX Eagle, Guide R Brakes. So a little bit behind, say, a common style with the AM29 Essential build, which comes with a Fox 38 performance and DPX2 for the same money. So a little bit behind the eight ball there. But with propane, the value is definitely when you spend a little bit more. So the Tai AL performance comes with ultimate level RockShox suspension, X01 drivetrain, code RSC brakes for 4,799 US dollars, which is a couple of hundred more than say the equivalently spec common style. So just a little bit more expensive. So I'm going to have to give them between an A and a B, but I think I'm just going to have to give them an A because the e-bikes are definitely really great value. So yeah, I might have to push common style up to S as well from my previous vid too. Next up, we have Raw, which is another direct-to-consumer brand, which is based in Europe, but they also sell to Britain as well as the US. And you can definitely tell they do one thing and one thing well, and that's sell shred-ready enduro bikes with a bulletproof alloy frame for pinners. You can always tell a brand means business when they have the suspension kinematics on the open, pretty much on the homepage. They have one bike, the Raw Madonna, and it's got 160 millimeters of rear travel with 170 or 180 millimeters up front. So it's a full on enduro slayer with progressive geometry. So you've got a 78 degree seat angle, 64.5 degree head angle. It's also good to see they've got proportional chain states depending on the frame size. So they grow as you go bigger and reach on the size large is 480 millimeters. They have frame only options and two builds. The Fox factory build comes in at 6,100 US dollars. So pretty exy, but you get great spec for the money. So you get a Fox 38 factory, factory shock, XT 12 speed drivetrain, XT four pots, and a Fox factory dropper. So pretty damn flash stuff, but a little bit behind say common style YT and propane for the money. So I'm gonna have to give them a B. Okay, so let's check out Ragley now. We can finally talk a little bit about hardtails and get back to some more affordable bikes. So I've talked a little bit about Ragley's in my hardtail build video, so I'll put the link in the description for that. They have both chrome molly as well as alloy options. The Ragley big wig is probably one of the best value chrome molly hardtails around. You can pick one up for 2,699 Australian dollars and 1,799 British pounds. And that comes with a RockShox Revelation, Brand X Dropper, Guide T Brakes, as well as NX Eagle, which competes with great value alloy bikes like the Marin San Quentin. If you want alloy, there's also the Ragley Big Owl, which comes in at 999 pounds for the full bike. So that's great value for an awesome shred ready hardtail with great geometry. So if you want good quality, aggressive hardtail, Ragley is tough to beat. So I'm going to have to give them an S. So on to Revel bikes now. And just like Evil, they have some super nice bikes, but they are on the more expensive side. I'm a big fan of the look of the bikes and also the CBF linkage and the nice balance gear of the bikes is really good too. The Rascal is definitely one of my dream bikes. 
Looking at the GX Eagle build kit of the Rascal, they are on the more expensive side at 5,199 US dollars, but the spec is pretty decent and smart for what you get. So you get a Pike Select, Super Deluxe Select Shock, and you also get Industry 9 wheels. So for a boutique brand, it's not too bad, but I'm still gonna have to give them a C. Next up, we have Rose Bikes, so another direct-to-consumer German brand. For 2021, they have updated their Root Miller, which is a 150mm bike, and then also their Ground Control, which is their short travel 120mm trail bike. Safe to say the value is pretty damn good on these bikes. So looking at the Root Miller 2, it costs 2,599 euros, and for that, you get a Pike Select Plus, Super Deluxe Select Plus Rear Shock, a mixture of a few different Shimano 12-speed parts for the drivetrain, and then you also get Formula Cura 4-pot brakes. The Geo is pretty damn dialed too, on the size large, 470mm reach, 75 degree seat angle, and 66 degree head angle, so it's going to make for a nice balanced all-mountain kind of trail bike. So for Rose, I'm going to have to give them an A, but they're almost an S as well. Onto Sun now, and definitely an older brand, but their new bikes are some of the most futuristic out at the moment. They look absolutely sick. The Sun Kern EN, so their enduro bike, has been pretty successful in the EWS. The geometry of the bike's pretty damn dialed and up to date. 77 seat angle, 65.5 degree head angle, and a 484 millimeter reach on the size large. In terms of spec, it is a little bit more than some of the competition, but compared to say a Trek Slash, it's a little bit cheaper for the equivalent spec. So for 5,299 euros, you get a carbon frame, Lyric, Super Deluxe rear shock with a remote lockout. So for races, that's pretty cool to see. GX Eagle and Code RSC brakes. So for all that, I'm going to have to give them a C. On to the second last brand with Voodoo Now, who have been pretty famous for winning Hardtail of the Year on their Bazango. Coming in at 650 pounds, you get an air fork, 1x11 drivetrain, and some pretty impressive gear for a bike at this price point. It just misses out on spec for the money compared to the Vetus Nucleus, but they also have the Bazango Carbon for £1,000. So that's absolutely crazy, a Carbon Hardtail for £1,000, that's sick. So I'll have to slot them in between an A and S, but yeah, I think we'll go up to an S this time. So finally, we're on to the last brand, and that's White, who have been pretty well known to be one of the first brands to push 29er geometry, as well as the shorter offset forks. The hardtail is a really great value with trail ready geometry and pretty smart spec. So looking at the 801 V3, for under a thousand pounds, you get a really impressive bike with some great geos. So 64.5 degree head angle, 74.5 seat angle, and a long 470 millimeter reach on the size large. So really aggressive, hardcore geometry for a hardtail. You also get a one by drivetrain, boost frame and fork. It's also an air fork for under a thousand pounds. So it's great value to see there. Their dual suspension bikes are equally impressive. So looking at the entry level S150, so that's their 29er, 150mm kind of all mountain bike. So for 2,499 pounds, you get a pretty damn dialed bike with some great specs. So you get a Pike Select Fork, Deluxe Select Plus Rear Shock, SLX 12 Speed, and my favorite Shimano MT520 brakes. So for Wyatt, I'm gonna have to give them an A. So there you go, there's part two of my best value bike brands tier list. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a like. Also leave a comment. If I missed a bike brand or anything like that, leave it in the comments and I'll cover it in the future one. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, I've got plenty of content like this coming out in the near future. But as always guys, thanks for watching. See ya.